Hi, my name is Sean Maloney and I'm a product marketing manager on the Office team focused on OneDrive. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the OneDrive API, what's new and coming soon, then I'll give you some ideas for what you can enable and what you can build using the new OneDrive API. OneDrive is the core file storage platform for files in Office 365 that give developers access to files regardless of where they may live. Office 365 files may be stored in OneDrive Consumer, OneDrive for Business, or enterprise-wide files may be stored in SharePoint. The good news is that the new OneDrive API now gives developers access to those files via a single API. In addition, the OneDrive API integrates with the Microsoft Graph, which further simplifies data access and authentication across several different Microsoft endpoints, including users, groups, mail, calendar, and tasks. Over the past few weeks and the past few months, we've released a set of SDKs and file picker tools that enable developers to get started even faster than ever. In addition, we've added some of the functionality that enterprise customers need that are now enabled with access to files stored in OneDrive for Business. Some of these features include ability to APIs to help manage permissions, so the ability to view, add, or delete user permissions in OneDrive for Business. Webhooks that allow, that allow your app to subscribe to changes in a user's OneDrive and be notified of those changes when they occur instead of constantly pulling our API or simply guessing to understand when those changes may have occurred. In the coming months, app delegated tokens will become even easier to use. In addition, more functionality that's available in the OneDrive API will be available directly using the Microsoft Graph. Let's take a closer look at some of the key use cases for file access and management for consumers and enterprises that you can enable with the OneDrive API. First, the simplest scenario that you can enable is simple file access, so the ability to open and save back a file to a user's OneDrive, leveraging the OneDrive File Explorer experience. In this case, the fastest and easiest way to get started is by using our file picker tools. So they're available for iOS, Android, .NET, and we have a new version for JavaScript. You'll find a deeper dive in the Build 2016 session, another video that'll help you get started with file pickers in Office and OneDrive API. For all other scenarios, you'll want to use the more complete OneDrive API that should give you more access, more robust file access and data management capabilities. We also have SDKs that help you get started with the OneDrive API that are available for iOS, Android, .NET, and Python. Some of these scenarios that you can enable with the OneDrive API include enabling roaming or backup of user data. This is when your app needs a location in a user's OneDrive uh, to store data related to a user that enables roaming or the ability to um, uh, store settings in a user's OneDrive. OneDrive API now supports app folders in OneDrive Consumer and OneDrive for Business. Then there are file management tools. Think of these as applications that need access to a set of files in a user's OneDrive in order to enable um, more robust file access capabilities or more val value-add services on top of a user's file stored in OneDrive. To enable this, the relevant features that the OneDrive API supports are sync changes and webhooks. You can find additional details on how to leverage and get the most out of webhooks in another Build 2016 vid vid uh, video that's linked to this video. Then finally, you can build file analytics and data protection tools. These are typically enterprise level apps that take action on a set of users in a user's OneDrive and, use, and do delegated file management tasks um, typically for data protection, compliance, or auditing purposes. Um, the OneDrive API, in order to leverage this, supports um, access to app-delegated tokens, which I mentioned before are getting simpler as we move forward. And then there's also um, permissions management that actually helps enable these types of applications. You can find a sample that explains and helps you understand app-delegated tokens that's also linked in this video. There are several other APIs that are related to the OneDrive API that you may need to get familiar with um, if your scenario isn't completely addressed by the OneDrive API. 
These include the Microsoft Graph, which I previously mentioned, that give you access to a set of other Microsoft endpoints or data in micro other Microsoft endpoints. Then there are the SharePoint REST APIs, which are our legacy APIs that are used by a broad set of our developer community. These APIs are extremely robust, and there's a ton of flexibility um, and, and, and power in these APIs. However, if you're less familiar with SharePoint, these APIs may be more difficult to use. Then there are the management activity APIs that give you access to user and event logs um, for auditing purposes. Um, however, they're on a less real-time basis. Then there are the SharePoint migration APIs. These are the APIs that are used to move multi-user um, broad sets of data across um, a single or multi-user OneDrive. Now, this API you may want to use if you need to move data on behalf of a set of users. Um, however, if you just have simple file migration tasks on one user, you can use the OneDrive API for those tasks. We hope this video gave you a helpful introduction to the OneDrive API and some of the things that you can build. Um, come visit us on our dev portal on dev.onedrive.com, which is home for all of our documentation, samples, downloads, um, and information. Uh, we're also on GitHub and Stack Overflow. Um, and as I mentioned, there are several other build sessions that dive deeper into some of the aspects of the OneDrive API that you may want to check out. And of course, there's our developer community on dev.office.com. We hope you found this helpful. And good luck and happy building.